The eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that Patrick Locksmith Locke has left the hot seat and I've been joined by ex-England junior badminton player James Lauder. Thanks, James, for coming on to the programme tonight and sharing your wisdom on badminton. Um, no problem at all. Yeah, good to see you. Um, the first question really is where Oxfordshire badminton is at the moment and, and what the league structure's like and, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> Oxfordshire badminton is definitely a, a minor county. Um, so from a badminton's perspective, when I was a junior 15 years ago, it was the likes of Yorkshire were very strong. Um, Buckinghamshire have always been good. The National Badminton Centre is in Milton Keynes. So um, obviously there's some players that kind of travel over from Oxfordshire to Buckinghamshire um, to play. So Oxfordshire Badminton has healthy numbers. There's a good junior setup, but as all things, it takes time for the juniors to come through. So I play for a club called Windrush Badminton Club, which is based in Whitney. Um, great club, Wednesday night club nights. They have a good Saturday junior section uh, that is very welcome. You know, if there's people... The parents that are out there that want their children to start up and playing. Windrush is a great club based in Whitney, but there are lots of lots of clubs that need more players. Um, definitely, it's one of those sports that people will. You know, the numbers look really good on the on the paper. Um, uh, in the UK, I think uh, badminton at a grassroots level is very strong. But actually, then when you go up the ladder and you step into playing county level, the numbers dwindle. When people step into university, they stop playing. Um, and if you compare myself as an ex-England badminton player, I won two junior national, three three junior national titles, one at under-15, two at under-17. Um, but for me, I chose to go to university over um, turning full-time professional. I did turn full-time professional after university, but that was always then very hard for me to ever make Commonwealth Games, Olympic Games, and so on. Whereas in other countries or you know like Asia for example it's much more like football there's a lot of there's a you know, the number 100 in China is probably as good as the number 10 in England so if not more that's that's interesting I mean is that a, a decision you regret or was that a good decision to go to uni rather than um it's it was the best decision I ever made because now I'm married with a one-year-old and I if I hadn't have done that then I'd never have met Katie that's, so that, that. um of course, I mean, I'd love to have be, be, been better, I, I, but, you know, I could have gone full-time and um, got an injury. And then you're kind of like, well, what do I do now? Do I go into coaching? And um, I'm very fortunate that um, I went to a good school. Parents put me through a good school up in Shropshire. I, I still trained hard at university and still turned full-time. I played the European Tour for two seasons, but then I had a degree under my belt that I could then jump on a grad scheme, which brought me down to Oxfordshire um, back in... Oh, uh, 2016, 2017, when I then joined Oxford Downs and played cricket. And uh, I still played badminton to a decent level then, but actually um, it then came full circle because I now still work in the sports industry. So I work for um, Babalat and, and um, account manage the sort of southern retailers for badminton, paddle and tennis. Uh, that's interesting again. I, I, mean, I mean, you said that w- Windrush, it, it, are there other clubs around Oxfordshire that, um, you know, people you know, watching this programme will, you know, if they're living s- slightly south of the region, they could go to uh, other yeah. places. <clears throat> Absolutely. So um, another good club is Abingdon Badminton Club. Um, they play at um, St. Helens and St. Catharines, oh, yeah. and they also play matches at Larkmead School, so just across the road. Um, Windrush um, in Whitney play at the Henry Box. There is also another club um, in Whitney. So again, if it's a different night that you can't make a Wednesday, for example, um, but Windrush is, is the strongest club, um, has m- more teams um, and also has lot of, you know that good junior section. You've got Feathers, which is based in Banbury. Uh, again, a strong club, more of that link with Buckinghamshire as well. So that's quite, quite good. People who are just you know, on the borders, which is difficult for the sport. You know, if you live on a, on, a, on a borderline, it is quite hard, especially if you're up in the West Midlands or East Midlands and it's a long way to travel to a performance centre, a county hub. Um, the one other thing in, in Oxfordshire in the junior setup, so if there's, if there's parents that are listening and they want their son or daughter to play, um, National Badminton is a, a national-based badminton um, coaching setup, but Julie is, um, is the founder and she is from Oxfordshire. So the Oxfordshire setup itself is very good. Um, there is a number of places that you can play in, in Whitney, Oxford, Abingdon, Didcot, 
uh, Banbury. Um, and I think they do like an intro to badminton, which is four sessions for £10. So, for, you good. know, for, for juniors, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, uh, you don't get anything for £2.50 these days. No, absolutely. So, no. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm quite impressed with that. So it's quite healthy then, really, the, around Oxfordshire for, for badminton and where you can go to get, go and play. Yeah, I think for me, I've probably, you know, I, I'm not a, I'm, I'm definitely a positive Percy, but I think because I, I've come from an elite background, um, I kind of look of I look at badminton as like a, a global sport, and you know look at our top players who are fantastic, but they're not competing with the top Asian players. Whereas actually recreationally and um, you know the grassroots level, it is good. But it's just then do those kids that play badminton also play football, also play rugby, cricket. You know, where, where there's a lot more TV time, there's a lot more uh, things that are, you know, money that's pumped into the, those sports than there are into, um, not so much tennis, because tennis is, is good, but let's say racket sports, squash is dwindling, uh, racquetball very much dwindling, paddle is up and coming, you know, paddle is a, is a great sport, but again, limited in the UK on the weather and on facilities. So uh, badminton is, is good, but we just miss that club system. You know, we, we, we play a lot in school sports centres, as I said to you earlier, St. Helens and St. Catharines, Henry Box School. They're not really enjoyable places to then maybe have a drink afterwards or, um, yeah. So, so you, you sort of alluded to it there a little bit on, on the sort of setup for England. Where, where are we in England badminton at the moment? Is it in a good place? Is it in, you know, robust system they've got in place? Yeah, I mean that you know Milton Keynes is a good um, is a good hub. It's got a good centre. Um, Table Tennis England are also based based there. There's a new um, CEO who is doing really good things. She is active and she's approachable, which is key. Um, I think from a performance perspective, you've got a couple of good mixed players. Um, there's another as a a good young pair of uh, men's but uh, men's doubles players, but actually. You know, the Olympics is in 20, is in this year in Paris, and actually it's a shame because GB, I'm not sure if they're going to qualify for men's singles or maybe we have one player playing women's singles. Whereas, you know, that, that's that's a shame really. You'd expect us to have at least a men's singles, a women's singles, yeah. ladies doubles, men's doubles, and mix quite comfortably. But um, you know, those players that do go to the Olympics, it will be very hard for any of the singles players to get through more than a couple of rounds um, and I hope they prove me wrong because I'll be supporting them but it's just so strong in other countries where they've got a, a better club system they pay players to play club matches on weekends whereas our county system is a bit more of a um, you know I could still play at quite a high level county system and I haven't been to a racket for six to nine months and it shouldn't really be like that yeah so yeah totally understand so that's, that's interesting um, from <laughs> From that, I suppose, have you ever thought going into coaching on the badminton front, or do you do some coaching? I don't anymore. Um, obviously, I've got I've got a little girl, so she takes up a lot of time, which is I absolutely love it. Um, <clears throat> my wife is a as a private school teacher, so as you know, um, so Saturday I spend my day with my little one, and Katie works, and you know that at that young age, it's bedtime and bath time at, at that kind of time. Yeah. But I did do coaching. I coached when I was at university. Um, I coached after. I actually coached for National Badminton as well for a, a year or two. But um, when you're doing a full-time job, it's then hard to go it's out difficult. and do two hours or three hours in the evening. And I enjoyed it, especially with the young, the younger ones, you know, even the ones that didn't, never really wanted to become a professional badminton player. I probably actually enjoyed that more in my latter years of coaching. They just wanted to pick up a racket and play and have some fun. Um, I guess for me, the... You know, coaching probably put a bit of a dampener on my playing because I was choosing at university to, to coach some junior England girls um, that were on the program when I should have been training myself. But like you said, it's it's always hard with those kind of sports when you're a player because you're sacrificing your own um, strength and conditioning or uh, flexibility session or whatever it might be because you're earning money. But it, you need that money to then go play. Yeah. So um, yeah, I enjoyed my coaching. I did. I've done a lot, but. Um, now with full time job, it's just um, yeah. No, yeah totally. I'd love to do a bit more, um, but same here. You know, we're at Oxford Downs. I'd love to, to try and do a little bit of the cricket coaching because I enjoy it. But it's just time. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Something you might consider for the future. Yeah, maybe when, when the family's <laughs> uh, growing up. Yeah, and stuff. maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I always love it. We we had uh, young Ben Cox on last week from Motorsport, and he brought in his his helmet and some of his trophies he'd won, which was really interesting. You pull some stuff in, and I'm, I am quite um, 
perplexed by by this. Can you just take us through this a little <coughs> bit? Because this is quite interesting. Of course I, I can. Um, yeah, I didn't want to bring in any medals because my mum has probably got them somewhere <laughs> at home um, and they can stay there. Um, oh yeah, obviously, like I said, I, I um, thought that this might be a bit more niche rather than, like you said, bringing in awards or whatever. So I obviously work for Babala, a uh, French brand. <clears throat> you can see here, I don't know if uh, you can see on the camera, but um, the tread here, which is on an, in this is an indoor court shoe. So this could be used for squash or racquetball, but it's predominantly badminton. Um being a French company, Michelin is is a as a partner. So um, this is just a, you know it's a good sales sample for me to go out and show customers. But actually, it's quite interesting as a yeah, sports absolutely. fanatic. So you can see how the tread fits onto um, a midsole, which is um, a soft EVA. But actually, for indoor sports, you want it to be quite um, soft on the heel, where you kind of put your foot down, and then as you kind of go heel to toe, yep. it's a lot harder up here, so you can push off. So in badminton, obviously, it's all about um, dexterity in, in the, uh, moving off the court quickly, but also plyometrics. So plyometrics is so key because it is, it, is it is the fastest racket sport in the world. So the, the smash on it has nothing to do with footwear, but the smash is 565 kilometers per hour, which is about 350 miles per hour. That's amazing, isn't so, it? And when you think about that compared to like a tennis serve, you know, Andy Roddick back in the day, yeah. um, plenty of current players now, but I always remember Andy Roddick, who's my favorite player. 150 odd mile an hour tennis serve that hit the line judge at the back and you think oh my goodness it's the fastest thing ever whereas when you see a shuttle being hit on the floor it stops quite quickly um yeah that's 200 miles an hour quicker than that tennis ball so um yeah again compared to cricket when you see someone bowling really fast show a back to 100 mile an hour you're thinking oh I, i couldn't face that anywhere near but then shuttle it's kind of seemed you've got this flying at you 16 goose feathers it is, um, I was going to say, is it is goose fe- feathers? Goose so feather. That's the um, best one, isn't it? Yeah, goose feather is the best one. This is a, a hybrid shuttle, so you can see here that the, the, the um, nest here is plastic, whereas most of them would be all in one piece. Uh, but this is you. just a more durable yeah. shuttle that we, we provide. But goose feather from the left wing flies, and it's from the other wing it actually would fly funky. Yeah, right. So a little novelty. But yeah, that's how the shoe works anyway. So you've got your tread, your midsole, you have different levels of EVA foam, and then you've got your upper is super light feel weighs nothing um absolutely nothing. yeah and that's what it's <laughs> going to be that's a pure performance shoe so you want it to weigh as little as possible but to will still be stable and you've got a little bit of um protection here because in badminton you slide your foot a lot so then obviously that can wear down quite easily on the court um especially if you're playing on a dusty sport very very <laughs> very interesting that james thank you for that no problem um so we Discuss the show. Yep. Rackets, just take us yeah, through quickly, a little bit so of rackets. Just a couple of rackets here. I mean, to the, to the naked eye, it's, you're not going to see much difference. Um, yeah, this is £160 and this is £60. Ah, so, right, okay. Yeah, you know, the, the, w- there's other brands out there that are... trust me with the 160 one. Yeah, yeah okay. it's fine. <laughs> um, there's other brands out there that are more expensive. Um, I won't name them because um, they are the enemy. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that, that's the kind of range you're looking at in the UK market. You can, you can, you can get as low as 20, 30 quid. You know, for a, for a 30 to 40 pound for a graphite frame. Below that, you're looking at like an aluminium. You know, you see them in the garden, they've got two pieces um, and they're absolutely rubbish. So what, what is this made of? Graphite. Gra- it's gra- graphite. So, right, yeah, right. They both okay. are, yeah. but obviously you've got more technology in this. You've, you know, actually, if you were to look closer, this is a lot thinner here. Yeah. So then the stiffness in the, in the shaft here is, is higher quality of uh, graphite. So actually something like this and uh, Xfil Fury, Xfil Rise, they're pretty similar in weight. But this is very stiff, so hard to play with if you're a, yeah. if you're a novice player. Um, you want a stiffer racket, a more head-heavy racket if you want to create power. Um, and then the opposite, you want a flexible racket, something that's quite lightweight if you want quickness and manoeuvrability. I, I can actually yeah. feel that that's quite flexible and that is quite stiff. Yeah, that is a really, yeah. Stiff, it is a really stiff racket. That yeah. would be a pure performance player's frame. So um, Very, very interesting. Um, I, I love all that. I, I'm learning so much about other sports, which is really great. I, I say this every week, but it is, it's true. Um, just last thing for, for me, James, is um, normal game. You know, what, what's a set? What, what, how, how does the game just transpire, if you like? Um, what, in terms of scoring? And yeah, scoring. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, it, it's the same for doubles and singles, which is quite simple. Uh, the, the obvious way is best of three to 21. So best of three um, games. Um, obviously, there's different ways of calling it a set, a match, a game. But yeah, you'll play 
your first um, your first set will be to 21 points. Um, if I beat you, 21-10. Um, and then in the second game, you beat me 21-10. We have that third and final deciding game. Win by two clear points. Get to 29 all. It's uh, a next point wins, 30-29. Um, that's pretty much the basics of the, the scoring yeah. side of it. You have um, a doubles court and a singles court. So yeah. the same court, but the easiest way to kind of um, do it is that Singles is um, skinny, so you don't play in the outside tram lines. Doubles is um, they short and fat because it's out in the back when you yeah. serve. Otherwise, it's a full court. And how high is the net? Good question. Five foot um, four like or something like that. Five I think. foot four. Yeah, it's about, about here on me. Or six foot something. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I have been known to take the nicky out of a certain person sat next to me, so I won't live on uh, YouTube. Luckily, I've got a tall upper body yeah, when I sit down, but it, my legs yeah. are now dangling away. So <laughs> <laughs> I say nothing. James, look, that's been uh, really good, really insightful into Babington. And obviously, anybody who wants to get involved, get along to Windrush and. Uh, you know, they'd be pleased to see you. It'd be a great place to, to go. So thanks for coming in, James. No problem. Um, good Thank luck for, for the cricket me. season, obviously, because yep. we're looking forward to it. the most you. important. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm biased, but I, I would say that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, th- thanks for joining us. It was great insight into that.